Zero hour was two hours. Why was it not called zero hours or zero hour with another hour just before zero hour? I missed this bloody bit of the show in the stadium because my ticket for the event said the thing started five when it clearly started four. I cannot believe it. But talk about things you love to see to bloody good blokes. Up oh, the Simon Miller for getting in that ring and being a really bad security guard. I've got to ask this question, everybody. Why were the security guards who were hired to stop any physical confrontation not doing anything until after the physical confrontation had started? Why does this keep happening in professional wrestling? Where are all of the good security guards and why are all of them allergic to the wrestling? Jeff Jarrett versus Grado kind of happened at AEW all in 2023. And even though it only kind of happened, without like a prayer, by the way, but I can see why Tony Khan wouldn't want to shell out all that money because presents for CM Punk won't buy themselves the arse-kissing gimp. But it's still a massive WTF moment because it is Grado and it was Grado doing some form of wrestling at Wembley. And I honestly say that because I thought Grado had given up the professional wrestling to do that acting with the policeman's hat on and all that bollocks. But on top of that, never ever did I think I'd hear Jeff Jarrett calling a nearly sold out Wembley Stadium a bunch of dafties and fannies and wankers and slags. Dafties and fannies and wankers and slags. Dafties and fannies and wankers and slags. And I've got one thing to say back to Jeff Jarrett and that is Jeff you're an ignorant slut and in the words kind of of the late Terry Funk rest in peace Terry Funk you're a whore now it's clear to me that Mercedes money can't have that much money because judging by her seat there she's in with the common folk where's the executive box you'd think a woman with all that alleged money would be able to afford with her money unless of course her money is indeed monopoly money and then we get to this wholesome part of the night where Jack Perry screams down the camera this is real glass every Everybody, go cry me a river. I was initially thinking, Jack Perry, that's a very weird thing for you to say to professional wrestling fans who want to see you put through said glass and want to see you in copious amounts of pain, you professional wrestling heel. But then it turns out, of course, AEW have a fantastic show, but the only bloody thing everyone is talking about is CM Punk having another backstage altercation with somebody who, in what is a massive WTF moment, I am against. I'm on CM Punk's side. He didn't bloody start this one. He didn't really start any of them but I don't like him anyway. All he apparently said was don't use actual real glass in the TV write-off scenario Jungle Jack you massive dick but now we find ourselves here once again. I don't know what's gone on. It's probably changed 15 million times by the time this video goes live compared to what's out there as of me standing here right now. So all I've got to say is I'm agreeing with CM Punk on this one which means you need to grab 2 each animal and head for the bastard border. The end is nigh. The end is nigh. Time to run away the end is night, night. But oh no, don't chop him too hard, Samoa Joe. Otherwise, he'll go and cry like a little bitch, like he did a little time ago. Tony, Tony, he chopped me too hard and hurt my little toothy woothy wah wah wah. Don't worry, Philip. Let me lick your ass some more and not deal with this situation whatsoever. But as long as I get to lick your sweet ass, that's all that matters to me, Tony Khan, otherwise known as your personal bitch. Wanka! She and finger! It's clear that Samoa Joe needs to be renamed Geordie Joe because of all those mannerisms he was clearly born in. Lord's country up here, Newcastle upon Tyne. Now this should not be a WTF moment because we are speaking about Juice Robinson here who is a wrong un in the best possible way. But there he is there in the middle of Wembley Stadium on his hands and knees panting like a horny dog on a hot day. Quite frankly, whatever is wrong with the man, I want a slice of it too. It's Jim Ross, bitch. Bah! Gouda! Did it again! So the lads on commentary are speaking about Freddie Mercury doing things inside Wembley Stadium, which prompts Jim Ross to say he's not here, right? Ha 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 ha! Which forces Excalibur to reply, saying Freddie Mercury passed away a number of years ago. And I'm thinking to myself, what a way to make a feel-good moment absolutely rubbish, Jim Ross, you massive tosser! And then we have a tag so blind that Cash Wheeler didn't even see it happen. And in what is potentially the biggest WTF moment in the eight years of this absolute bollocks I've been doing on YouTube, Rick Knox calls the spot correctly. He is the scourge of tag team professional wrestling rules in an AEW ring, yet he's calling something right in a tag team match. Maybe he isn't as useless as a knitted condom. And of course, earlier in this video, we already did the end is nigh bit, but I don't think we've got time to run. Bah! 
Goddard did it again. At this point in the match, we hear Jim Ross say the biggest muscle in the body is the quadricep femoris. That's the thigh muscle, by God. And we all know that is absolute bollocks because we all know that when you Google what is the biggest muscle in the body, this is what endlessly appears. It's the arse. And to be honest with you, upon Googling this myself, I was a bit surprised not to see Finn Balor's dick. And there I was thinking that's the stupidest thing Cash Wheeler has done over the last little while. Going for a 450 in a match against the same opponents where that same move cost you the match a couple of short years ago. That is the definition of insanity. That man is just stupid. Whoa, shoot! It's a genuine WTF moment that FTR actually beat the Young Bucks in that match at all in 2023. And that's because I was thinking Cash Wheeler had blown FTR's chances of winning the match by doing his extracurricular things. I guess we're all just very lucky that he isn't easily triggered, both in terms of not shooting any body with his extracurricular things allegedly and also because he was faced with thousands of people chanting wheeler's got a gun got a gun wheeler's got a gun for about half a pissing hour and he kept his composure fair play to cash wheeler that's a weird thing to say but we move on and it's moments like these that make me realize why the commentary team are so happy to call renee paquette remarkable she must be worried john's gonna do something sick in the shower or something brutal when he's gonna go and get the milk from the front door never mind what he gets up to in the midst of a professional wrestling matchup look at him there man one week after the president of the spanish fa forcibly kissed one of their players on the lips against her will john moxley does the same thing to sue and sue is what sue should be doing right back to john moxley after he did that thing the massive diddler in the cultaholic wrestling podcast sense the word most definitely and a massive wtf moment from that stadium stampede match comes in the form of the hippest, the most happeningest, the most coolest game that all the cool kids are playing these days, and that's Where's Penta? Forget about Where's Wally, forget about Where's Waldo, where the bloody hell was Penta for nine tenths of that stadium stampede matchup? And you're probably sat there at home saying, Ross, you big fat idiot, he was getting changed into his evil Penta costume. Oh, oh, the spookiness, oh, oh. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about though, dear viewer, he's nailed on to be involved in the rest of the matchup, making up for the lost time he spent backstage. Uh. Was he bollocks? Penta says I'll do one move off a ladder then piss off home Tony Khan. Thank you for all that money you massive cuck. But I'm just sat there thinking what the hell Penta? I thought you were a nice guy. And I bet Ortiz and Trent were very very happy indeed that most people in the stadium at that moment watching Claudio Castagnoli do his massive spin Orange Cassidy instead of watching them do their ballocks in the corner. Because you see in the spirit of Chawumba Wumba because that's how you say that band's name from the late 90s isn't it Ortiz he got knocked down but he got up again and he did a horrible suplex to the floor sick bars Liz will be spinning in her grave knowing that she is the third best queen to ever grace Wembley Stadium the best is obviously queen queen with Freddie and Brian and Roger and the other fellow with the guitar then of course you've got the second best queen being Tony Storm God save her and all that bollocks and then you have Queen Liz who is the third best queen to ever grace Wembley Stadium, but that entrance though, that gimmick change, it's one of the best things to happen in professional wrestling over the last little while. Up the Tony Storm. Now I do like how Sting was given a thumbtack jacket, but refused to use the thumbtacks on the back of the thumbtack jacket. Now I could make a joke here about Sting being old and Sting being outside at night time and Sting appreciating the warmth of a cold because he is a 64 year old psychopath, but I'm not going to do that because Sting, he dressed up as Jack the Ripper, Sting he painted the face and Sting walked the streets of London at night time proving he is absolutely clinically insane and there he goes again I make this a WTF moment every single time it happens on an AEW pay-per-view because with each AEW pay-per-view that passes Sting gets that little bit that little bit older but he keeps doing it and doing it again but it's spots like this which of course Sting had to do twice not just once because British tables apparently are made of British steel and not British wood it's all very strange but the fact that he's even older than the last time he did something like this means him doing it this time is still a massive WTF moment and even bigger than the last time I gave that thing a WTF moment. It all makes total sense, don't worry. And I'm here to stand with Swerve Strickland because it's clear for all to see that Swerve Strickland has been swerved because his hair which is a part of his body is outside that coffin, therefore that match it needs to be restarted right now wherever they are in the world. Chris Jericho, Stormbreaker and Hurricane Rana Reversal are not words that should go together in the 
same sentence unless that sentence is Chris Jericho at 52 years of age he tried a hurricane runner reversal out of a storm breaker but he didn't quite make it and he broke his neck but the fact he nailed that thing there it means I don't know whether to wind my watch or scratch my ass or whatever Stone Cold Steve Austin used to say on his podcast way back in the day it made no sense to me even now what am I doing I don't know and of course we've got to mention Max Caster's rap for his entrance at Wembley because he went there he said and these guys are as big a disgrace as Prince Andrew Yas Queen just not the Queen who bailed out her diddler son not and I repeat not in the cultaholic wrestling podcast sense of the word the big actual diddler poor Julia's Julia's heart. I can't believe I'm watching this on an AEW pay-per-view. Watching stuff like this, you would assume you would have to tune into a different kind of pay-per-view altogether. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. If you don't, ask your mom. Right, everyone at home, I want you to list every single person who has ever failed to kick out of a black mass right to their chops and then just <laughs> let just try it on for size. Billy Gunn kicked out of a black mass. <laughs> You can't be serious, Jeff. So they called a double clothesline, then they both hit a double clothesline at the same time, then they both suffered at the hands of a double pin because of that double clothesline. Ooh. And then we have MJF who really went and put the F into a WTF moment right in the middle of F and Wembley. I wish I could say the F, but I can't. Blame Logan Paul, it all changed after that forest thing, the dickhead. And I guess after all the twists and the turns of that main event match and all the bumps that Bryce took, God bless Bryce. God bless Bryce. Bryce beef is brilliant. We've got to make a WTF moment for the fact we're leaving Wembley Stadium with neither Adam Cole, Bebe, or MJF, with the massive F indeed, not turning on each other in the sense that they don't like each other anymore and not in a saucy way. No, not that way at all. Everyone's going. It's going to be MJF turn. It's going to be Adam Cole turning, but nothing happened. And I don't know what to make of that other than to say WTF. We'll end it there. God bless Tony Storm.